When we got up closer, well, a little closer, I came astern, where am I? has been up out the water about three feet from this body, head around, head peered out the water. And it was a, well, thing I've never seen before after about 40 years at sea. And it gradually sank in the water and disappeared. But after talking about it, the only thing we could explain it was a, sort of very much like a prehistoric animal. The whole thing, I suppose, would have weighed, what, several tons. And equal in size, I should think, the boat we were in. But, you know, the boat was 32 feet long. Although whales and many sea creatures occasionally come ashore, there seem to be few records of a stranded sea monster. One of the most celebrated, however, occurred in 1808 beneath the cliffs of the island of Stronsa in Orkney. Precise drawings were made of the Stronsa beast at the time and its dimensions were carefully measured. More than 50 witnesses swore to what they had seen. Today, among the other exotic exhibits at the Royal Scottish Museum in Edinburgh, is a piece of the backbone of the Stronsa beast. It's now in the care of Dr. Jeff Swinney. This was an animal which was described as being some 55 feet long. It was described as having a mane of hair running down the full length of the back, a tiny little head, a long neck, and many of the eyewitnesses, all the eyewitnesses who, who gave evidence on what they saw of this monster, quite reasonably interpreted this as being a totally new beast, a, a creature that they were completely unfamiliar with. Well, in the December of 1977, I was fortunate enough in being able to examine a beast which was stranded on the shore of the Tay near Carnoustie. These are the vertebrae of that animal, a basking shark. And I think the inevitable conclusion is that the animal which was stranded in Stronsi, in the Orkneys, was a basking shark. What tends to happen when a basking shark dies and the carcass rots is that the cartilages which are supporting the snout here tend to drop away. So these go, the snout goes, the large area here which contains the gill tissues falls away. So all that cloth goes and what we're left with is a small skull in this region on a, a long vertebra, long vertebral column here which tends to give the appearance of a very small headed creature with a long neck. The fins tend to fray out. And in the case of a male, another set of what might appear to be limbs would be in this region here. And the lower lobe of the tail tends to fall away. So what we're left with is this small headed, long necked creature with this long tapering body. But a rotting basking shark certainly doesn't explain the beast with great teeth, and basking sharks are tiny, which came ashore also in Scotland at Gourock on the River Clyde in 1942. Being wartime, the Royal Navy wouldn't permit photographs. And finally, the beast was taken to the grounds of the municipal incinerator. On the orders of the Borough Surveyor Charles Rankin, it was chopped up and buried under what is now the football pitch of St Ninian's Roman Catholic Primary School, Gourock. Mr. Rankin. I can't see that this uh, carcass was a, a rotting uh, basking shark. In the first place, this animal uh, showed no signs of rotting. It was absolutely complete, unmarked. Uh, the monster uh, measured approximately 28 feet from the tip of the nose to the end of the tail. Uh, the body as it lay on the ground was approximately five to six feet deep. Uh, the body could be described as having three parts, uh, the body, the neck and the tail, and the neck and tail tapered very gradually away from the body. Uh, the animal had teeth, uh, teeth about uh, perhaps that size, and uh, on both jaws. Uh, in the stomach of the creature uh, was a small portion of what I took to be a seaman's jersey. It was an open-knitted uh, portion uh, of some knitted material. And the other thing, uh, strangely enough, 
was the corner of what is described, can be described as an old-fashioned tablecloth. Just the corner, and it was complete with the tassels. The evidence for still unknown sea monsters is almost overwhelming. As for the great sea serpent, it too probably exists, except that it may not be a serpent, and there may be several different types of animal involved. The solution to this old mystery may come quite soon. At this moment, the two greatest powers on Earth are trying to develop sonar systems which will make the seas transparent so they can track each other's nuclear submarines. Those systems will locate the sea serpent if it exists. Indeed, at this moment, the evidence for its existence may be somewhere in the Pentagon or the Kremlin. Next Monday, Arthur C. Clarke investigates the largest natural explosion ever recorded. Next tonight, Invention.